Hello, everybody. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Mustache. I know. I know. How are you guys doing? No, we are significantly later than we normally are. Mostly due to uh, people and their stupid construction in my place. But, hi. How are you guys doing? How's it going, Insomniac? How you doing? So, today has not been the most best day for me. So, I'm honestly just feeling kind of like, bleh. I'm sitting on my couch, by the way, because my, my whole desk in my office is completely destroyed right now. They had to, like, dig into the walls and shit. So now I don't have a drawing space. And thank God I finished my, my like, 21 draw stuff. Because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to finish that stuff either. Like, it's just been one hell of a year, man. Like, when I finally thought I had, like, some semblance of normality, like... Uh, it's just so incredibly annoying. But anyways, how are you guys doing? What up with Star Kaiju? Hey, well, uh, he needs to start getting into the whole streaming situation. Um, he's been tied up with uh, a couple of things that he wanted to do with like uh, Black Comics Day was one thing that was like a really thing. Why is this moving so much? Why are you? Is it because of the cable? I think it's the cable. Hold on. Try something. I, I hate the whole, like, swiveling of my stuff. Is anything touching? Okay, I think that's right. There you go. All right. I think that should be better. There you go. That's so much better. All right. I can zoom in. I am not on my sturdy desk. I am on a couch. So please uh, bear with me for today. I shall be back to my normal setup tomorrow. Hopefully. Hopefully. All right. So a video went viral. That's kind of cool. I love it when those go viral. Uh, the one that I'm talking about, the outside drawings into the inside volume of your drawings. Um, that one went viral. That was kind of cool. Just, I guess people actually like knowing how their bodies are built. <laughs> and that's essentially what the sushi is, right? The sushi is outside edge, inside volume. Outside edge, inside volume. So you can cheat your way into drawing limbs by just knowing the limits of where they're supposed to go and then drawing the outside edge away from the body and then the width of however wide you want your arm to be inside the body. That's kind of cool. So, hey, Rod, hope you're doing okay. Thanks for still going. Ah, oh, man, it's consistency. Like, for me, it's, it's not even about, like, uh, it's about consistency. Um, that is the only thing that has set me aside from everybody else that I, like went into this industry with uh i've seen a lot of people come and go a lot of people come and give up a lot of people come go through one bad time and then they just kind of go like oh it's not for me and then i was always there just prevailing through the good and the bad shit through the tough times too because you know you have to learn to love every aspect of the life not just the aspects that are fun you have to learn to love everything about it. Okay? If you don't learn to love the hard times and, the, you know, good times, you end up in a situation where you end up resentful because you haven't achieved something that you might have wanted achieving or maybe uh, just something didn't present itself the way you wanted. Like maybe you didn't work for a studio, but you worked for a ton of other awesome places. You know, maybe you didn't get to work for 
Disney, but you got to work at a ton of production places and like places that other people would be like, what? That's so cool. You know, you never really know like where your path is going to take you. And a lot of the times it takes you on unadvent like unexpected <laughs> journeys. And just like fucking clockwork, they're about to come back. And I think Mustache is fucking freaking out because they're right on time to interrupt me one more time with my stream. What the fuck, dude? It's like a goddamn magnet. Are you the outside edge volume guy? Yeah. Am, oh, is that what I'm called now, huh? <laughs> you go outside edges so to your limbs and then you draw the volume inside. And you can draw arms as wide as you want based on that same guideline. Yeah. You can move them around. So you can get your selfie shots. Are you a full-time teacher now? Oh, I'm trying to become that. I'm trying to become a full-time teacher. Um, the thing is, it's really hard when schools won't hire you because you don't have a master's degree. That's literally, that's the only reason I don't have a, a teaching. Like I wouldn't care if it was like underpaid or whatever either. Like I just want to do that. I just want to teach. But I'm, I'm not able to do it in the state that I live in because I'm apparently not certified to. <laughs> so in order to bypass that, I just started teaching online. And seeing as I find that incredibly offensive that they won't hire somebody that's actually decent, uh, I actively like question why any, like what type of teachers they're hiring. You know, like, it's just like, if you won't hire someone that's validated by other, like, thousands and thousands of people, um, what makes a person that worked as an assistant in a movie any better or any worse? Wouldn't it be down to how they communicate the ideas and how they get, like, everything done? Like, how do they achieve the education of the students? You know, that's what I think. That's how I would assume, like, you would measure, like, the importance of a teacher. But at the end of the day, it's it's all about, like, if you spent and went into debt to be able to get into that industry. Yeah. And unfortunately, I don't have the extra $50,000, $100,000 that it would take to get a master's. So that just looks like a pipe dream at some point. But, you know, I'm going to become a good teacher regardless of them giving me a paper or not. And I'm going to reach as many students as I can. And even if it doesn't become like a thing that I make like a massive living in, oh, no. You know, it's just, it would be good to work for a school system because it gives you benefits. And then that would be for the health benefits mostly in anything. Um because that's just an expensive thing. So that's literally the, another reason that I would only go into another school system. Just because it's like a survival thing. Like I, it's very helpful to have good health insurance. And how sad is it that you have to like cater your career and like career choices based on that crap. Like to me, it's, it's just so unbelievably sad. Like, it's so sad that we're, like, to the point where we have to do that. But life is life. Man, I've been missing a lot of classes. I really want to learn. Well, I try to teach everything from scratch. Right now, I'm just ranting and doodling. Like, there's really not going to be much of a lesson today. I'm just really annoyed. Uh, like, I'm, I'm really angry. Like, I'm, I'm not a person that gets upset really easy. I'm a very patient man. But I've been dealing in a situation in my apartment for three months. 
in which I can't use my main room bathrooms and everything keeps breaking down. And it's um, incredibly uncomfortable and it's just like makes me really sad to the point of tears because it costs a lot to be able to get this place. And it's like I can't even live comfortably in my home that I spent so much money on. It's just like still so fucking stupid. It just makes me like really, really pissed off. But anyways, let's keep drawing. Let's draw somebody dancing, like some weird pose or something. Do the stinky leg, do the stinky leg. See, in this situation, this is where the edge thing would work, okay? Like excluding your head, taking away your head. If you draw your body, if you have your body like this, right? The upper shoulder is the edge. And then you draw inside. And just magically, you have that shape. And I know this doesn't seem like a big thing for a lot of people. Like, this might not seem like a magical thing. But to me, that was like, what the hell? That's it? That was it? Just going around and then going back in? Going around the edge of the outside and then going back in? And I have every single... Po oh, my God. And when I discovered that I could just practice that with little spheres... Like, okay, my legs come down and then go back in. My leg goes out and then it goes back in. And just magically, it just felt right. It was like, oh, oh, wait, hold on. Oh, arms are easy. Legs are easy. I can add anatomy to this later, of course. You know, like any way, shape, or form you want. Like, from that, you can just add your anatomy and stuff like but it still prevails the same way outside line into your foot if you want and then the inside volume is how wide or how thick you want your leg the connecting point is your circle that allows you then for movement because now you can copy the shape into other directions and so you have a connecting point Right? Once you find this, the movement becomes essentially just perspective work. It's just learning how to move a cylinder. Right? So once you understand the connecting point of a circle, everything else becomes a little bit easier to map out, regardless of where you throw that other part. So once you find that connecting point, moving it becomes infinitely easier. Like infinitely. It's, like I said, it's all the people here. Like there's like, there's like 17 people like dealing with shit in the fucking one little two bedroom, like three bedroom apartment. Like there's like, I'm, I'm surprised that you can't hear like the power and that drilling and stuff like that right now. Like, it's so fucking annoying. And they're coming in and out with, like, you know, construction materials and shit. Do not allow for any quiet. And I can't focus. And it just is driving me fucking nuts. Dude, I'm, like, I already talked to my, like, my dad is a business mogul. He knows all that shit. Like he was like, yeah, I guess we're going to have to sue them. Like, you've been going through fucking distress for three months and they keep on, like, diminishing everything, so fuck them. So, you know, I hate, I hate having to go through that stuff with anybody, but I'm just tired. And I'm sick and tired of people, like, dismissing that shit. Let's see, a frustrated pose. Damn it. See how easy it is? <laughs> I don't 
was so easy. It was just outside and then inside. And then this one gets tricky because that one's like right in the middle, right? But you just have to choose one of them. If, it, if you have ambiguous, just choose any of them. If it's an ambiguous pose, just either of them work because it just leads you back to that same circle anyways. Okay? So the whole point is just understanding that it goes from the top of your body. So this would lead to the other top of the shoulder. And this could lead to another hand. See what I mean? Like the little flow of things? Excluding the head that breaks that symmetry. If you break the symmetry, then it becomes harder to understand. But if you have this, the collarbone becomes a one simple shape. And you guys want to see how easy it is to draw the collarbone? Like whatever shape you have for your head, like body. Let's say you choose this this, or an egg, okay? If you want to find the collarbone, draw a circle and connect it to the top edges of your shape. If you have something very narrow, you can always draw a compass. And from there, you have your rib cage and egg for in the inside shape. So you just reverse engineer it. And either way, you end up with a space for your head, the edges of the shoulders at the top that you can just draw your arms coming down. So this is the top edge of your shoulder. This is not your bone. This is not your bone coming down. This is the outside part of your arm. Okay? And this is the top part of your shoulder. This is not your bone. You don't add volume to both sides. You only add volume inside. And that is how it works. When it's crossing over you have to draw this in two parts you have to draw the first part first and then find the outside edge and then do that and then you end up with the possibility of coming over and creating overlapping shapes and everything so that is what happens in those situations so when you're getting ready to go into the next stage of posing, you can just go, wee, add your volume inside, volume inside, draw a circle and connect the top edges. And now you have all the makings of your anatomy as well. So it becomes a lot easier to create flowy poses. Draw one going this way, one going that way, volume inside, volume inside. Da 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 da. Do, 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 do. Wax on, wax off. It becomes easier to get that. Like that flowy feel that a lot of us want to get. You know, we have our shape. If we want to cross over, we consider that little shape. This is the top of my shoulder. If this is going to cross over, this becomes the edge into inside volume. Boom. Now you have a hand going forward. You want a hand going up, up. This becomes the edge, and then it connects to the back. The only time this changes is because you're changing the direction of your arm completely. <laughs> and it just flows nicer from the bottom at that point. So there are little tiny like indications that will change the flow of it, but it's only in the extreme poses. Like when you're drawing your arm up, that little triangle has to go up as well. Because that's your collarbone. In a normal pose, it's normally down here. But when you have your arm raised, it goes behind your shoulder, so it just anchors up. Ta-da! So yeah, that's um, essentially what's going on in that situation. Now, uh, we only have 9.5 thousand likes. So we only have that. 
So I want you guys to get me to at least 20k likes and just because of my emotional distress today I need you guys to uh to to raise me up with some props tell me some of the stuff that you guys have learned from me that has helped you uh that would be actually really good to know because I'm going to start putting together um I'm going to start putting together all the extra comments that I get for my book and all the good reviews and stuff like that, I need to browse through them. So if I get any really cool reviews, I'm going to put that into my book. So anytime that you guys get like, uh, leave a, like a nice comment or anything like that on anything that I do, uh, I normally save them because I'm. It just makes me feel happy whenever I know that I'm changing someone and doing something for someone. So if you guys have a nice comment or you guys want to leave something like that, that'd be the perfect time to do it. Like within this week. Because I'm putting together all the layout for my book. And I'm going to be using a lot of these comments for the end papers. So that'd be really cool to to know. Even just to know that you guys have done like really cool stuff. But don't just leave it here. Honestly, thumbs. You really broke down what I was... Ooh, the thumb. The thumb is a good one. The thumb is like a, like a stick shift. Right? If you draw it like a little stick shift from a car which is three sections, the base, the stick, and the uh, digit, I guess. And then if you learn how to control those three elements in space, you can come up with a lot of movement for your designs and a lot of range of motion. So it's just a very convenient way to be able to see it because you can bring it into space a little bit easier just by being able to break it down into maybe one more section than you're used to. The other way to sewing it is a bean bag. You can draw the bean like a bean bag shape for a thumb and be able to just move that bean bag in as many ways as you want. It's very easy. You can overlap it really easy as well. So that's another way that you guys can do that. Hey, my art block book just arrived. It's beautiful. Woohoo! Yeah. And just wait until the next ones. Oh, man. The next ones are going to be so lovely because I already, I can grow in that area too, right? It's not just uh, putting together like all my artwork and putting it. No, no. I was, I was a book editor for like four years. I was a book editor for a major publisher for four years in kids' books. So I know what it means to put together a really pretty book um a lot of the the fun part of this is going to be once people realize how good it is <laughs> that is what's gonna be really fun because i'm not really a person that promotes myself i don't really promote myself at all i don't post i don't post outside of like whatever i do for my social media i don't really promote myself i don't do anything everything that you guys have ever seen from me has been done by somebody that believed in me most of the stuff that like has happened in my career has happened because other people believe in me. And that's the that's something really, really beautiful. Because I've never had to spend a single dime on anything that I've actually pushed for. I just genuinely just see what the world gives me. And it's really, really cool. It's really been been really, really, really lovely to see how much support like I've received over the years. So, no, this is not going to be any different. Um, I'm just going to... Pásale, pásale. I feel you, Mustache. I feel you. Yeah, exactly, dude. Yeah, everything that I've essentially achieved in my career has probably been really much thanks to my followers. Like, because I don't pay for advertising, and but yet I'm in every single sketchbook that Artica sells. Uh, I am going to get a custom line of, like, sketchbooks from Illo. I'm going to, I had, like, the opportunity to work with a couple other companies that I just didn't kind of want to work with. Uh, so I was just like, all right, cool. <laughs> the world. Yay. <laughs> Wacom uh, invited me to a couple competitions and they provided me a, a Cintiq 
so that I could work better with uh, digital work. So I was like, yay, and I competed against um, uh, My Animated Life and Derek Lofman, and we all tied. We each won one of the categories, and it was awesome. I got to compete against Derek Lofman, one of my all-time heroes, man. Like, I love his work so much. Uh, the only other time, uh, I've done a lot of, like, uh, speed drawing competitions throughout my life. Uh, I've come in the semifinals and the speed Wacom speed drawing competitions at TTN Expo a couple years in a row uh, against professional like an animators and illustrators around the world. So yeah, that's that's a thing to be proud of. Then I have like sales records from caricature companies that I worked in because I just outsold and outdrew every single person in the in the parks consistently. <laughs> it was it was just very. I've had an interesting life, man. I've had a very interesting life. And it wasn't until recently that somebody told me this. Like somebody like actually started just asking about my life and I never really talk about myself to people. I just listen. You know, I, I just listen and I'm just I don't find myself to be important. I just don't. Like I've dealt with this with my therapist and stuff. I don't know how to make myself feel important to me. That's why I feel like uh, you know, whenever I get props or I get like any sort of like, ooh, out of boys. I'm like, ah, oh, I must be doing something right. <laughs> because it's just like, I don't really see that in me. But other people do, which is the important part. Yeah, somebody told me like, there, there's a thing called imposter syndrome and to look it up. And I was like, the hell? The hell is that? <laughs> yeah, apparently it's when... Um, when you're actually something like a really awesome thing, like the king in a chessboard, right? But the only thing you see is a little pawn. That was the best representation of that. What you see in the mirror is not what you really are. And that happens to me a lot. That is literally like, apparently, apparently, I, I can't distinguish that because I don't really see myself like this as is. Uh, other people have to tell me, but that's the reason why I feel like I do a lot. And it's been interesting to understand that through therapy and uh, through talking to people that like suffer through the same kind of stuff. And it's just, um, I don't know. I want to be, uh, I want to be such a, like, I want to be a good teacher so badly that I, always think that I'm deluding myself into thinking that I might be and I have to keep myself in check. And then uh, by putting myself in check, I like confuse myself because it seems like everybody else is thinking that I'm doing something good. But then I, in my brain, I'm like, but am I? But are you? Or are you hurting people? Because they don't, are you like, are you like hurting them in their career because they're listening to you? Like, are they going, I'm like, ah, stop brain, stop, please don't. Tell me that I'm hurting people. and But it's a real reality. I often find myself guilty of thinking that I'm uh, maybe damaging people's careers by giving them advice that maybe not tailored to what they need. And it's just terrifying to me. And that's the reason that I quit YouTube the first time. Because I didn't have any support to like tell me otherwise. And I just let my brain like run amok. And it led to me almost deleting all the videos. It led me to almost deleting all the content that I had on my Instagram. Uh, I think I did it to my Pinterest. And then I felt really bad. I felt really sad doing it. So I didn't do it to the other ones. But that was like, that was a very bad breaking point for me. I, I had to choose if I wanted to be what I wanted to be. Or if I was just pretending to be what I wanted to be and I didn't have the abilities to do it. So it was like a lot of frustration. You know, a lot of banging yourself against the fucking wall all the time. Not gonna lie, a lot of, a lot of sadness, a lot of crying, a lot of just overly frustration that just like thinking you wasted so much time trying to pursue something and at the end of the day you might not be good at it. It's just terrifying. That's the notion that I 
that I fight against quite often. But, but, at the end of the day, I find myself smiling more than stressing. So at the end of the day, I find myself entirely more happy because I do what I do rather than stressed because I do what I do. And that is a very big factor in this. Because if you are able to stay within the structures of that life that you want to have, that dream that you have, and you're able to stay within the confines and still be able to have life happen around you, I find that to be success. Maybe, maybe you don't measure to the level of success that other people value and like go to, right? Maybe like, oh, you don't have the brand new car every year or you don't have a brand new cell phone, blah, 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 blah. But you get to do what you want to do every day and make your living with it. It might not be luxurious. It might not be the most oh, thrilling, oh, exciting, adventurous life, but you're going to wake up every day doing what you want to do for a living. And you're going to be happy doing it. And if you're smart, you'll push it and you'll push your own branding into stuff like that. And then eventually you just kind of live, right? (laughs) You just kind of stop struggling. You stop seeing life for what other people see it as, uh, as valuable. And you start valuing what you think is valuable. And that is that is the key. That's the key. The key is finding what makes you happy, not what makes other people happy, not what you think success means to other people. It's about what you think success means to you. And that's a really tough question to answer. So it's really easy to measure ourselves via what other people find uh, as important in life. Right? If your family has always told you that money is the measure of success... Well, if you're a person that cares what your family thinks, you're going to try to pursue money as the final outcome of what you want out of life. If you were with people that were a little bit more bohemian, a little more down to earth, you might find that maybe an artistic path is more of your tailoring instead of trying to pursue just endless endeavors of money. Maybe you have everything in between. Maybe you want to do a little bit of both. You know, all those decisions are what make all our own individual personalities. And, you know, there's all sorts for all kinds. You just have to learn which one you are so that you can actually uh, go through life enjoying it instead of surviving it. Because going to an office, to a job you hate, is survival mode. Every day. Every day you don't get to wake up when you want to wake up and do the things you want to do. And I'm not, I don't mean like a child. Okay? I don't mean like, oh, I get to sleep in every day. No, no. If, if you are a responsible human being... A responsible adult, you can function within the confines of certain parameters and still have a lot of work done. Like You don't have to be like a person that's like, oh my God, you have to work 17 hours a day, wake up at five in the morning. No, as long as you get your shit done, you can be a responsible adult. And that's the whole point, right? You have to learn that you have playtime, you have work time. You have everything in between time. And if you learn how to balance that, then you have successfully won adulting. And that's all it really takes. Learn how to find balance in your life somehow or another through loving what you do in some way or another. Find it as a hobby first. See if the hobby is something that you can make something with money with. And then if you can make money with it, then you find yourself a job within that industry so you can do what you want to do for a living every single day and have fun with it. 
If you love it, expand on it, learn about it, and then find a market for it. So it's not a good time to say, I just got a raise and a... Oh, no, that's great. Hey, guess what? If you got a raise and a bonus and you love that, and, and no, no, and that's awesome. That's fantastic. If, you're, if you don't hate your job, if you don't hate your job and it pays well, that funds everything fun, right? That can fund everything else that you want as fun. So that's also a good compromise. If you have a job that you're okay with and it pays decent, you can now fund all your happy stuff all your fun stuff, so that whenever you do have time to use it, you can just do it at your leisure. That's another avenue. There's no just like one like make or break avenue, just like with art. And you got to like see all the different possibilities. This is a leg. <laughs> That's essentially a leg. That's all it is. Three circles that taper down and then you balloon some parts. You can balloon the thigh to as big as you want. This part doesn't really balloon out because it's the bottom of your thigh, but you can actually make it a little bit wider if you want. Then your butt comes around this circle and it connects back to your hip bones, which connects back to your spine. So it goes around into your spine from this little circle that you had at the beginning. This little circle is the front of your hips. So that is where your body comes in. And like it gives you a lot of information really quickly, uh, yeah. So, anyways, um, we finished this little part really quickly. Darn it! Now we got to go into the application. Application time. Do, 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 do. What does that mean? We go into brown paper. That's it. <laughs> That's all it means. Hey, are these videos available? Yeah, just go to YouTube. Go to YouTube and you'll find them there. Uh, today is so incredibly annoying. I was supposed to go out and have like lunch with this pretty girl. And I was supposed to go to play pool and go kick some ass. And now I don't get to go do either of them. Because I got to sit here and supervise people. See, I'm a creature of habit. I'm a creature of habit, and I need to know that I'm like my schedule doesn't get fucked with, <laughs> because that just throws me off so much. I'm super excited for the new book. Yeah, me too. My how to draw book is gonna be awesome. Uh, what I'm going to want to do with that book, like I already, I'm already in the process of doing so, but it's going to be to generate a module where I have a general lesson plan, right? Like a normal how to draw book. Then I want to put a QR code that links you to a video on YouTube that shows you quick examples of how I draw these things. So it would be like how to draw a nose from a triangle, right? You'd see a video, you'd see all the guidance, but then I'd jump on here and show you guys how I would do that for different noses. Because to me, this takes a second. But to other people, this might be something that saves them a countless amount of hours. And knowing that you can do that with any single nose shape possible is kind of cool. And then you can go into things like beaks, and noses like for dinosaurs and stuff like that. Because that's all they are. The triangle leads you to a bunch of different things. Like, I don't know, animal mouths. The triangle gives you an opening for mouths as well. Rawr. But it can give you a lot more than that. It just gives you a way to understand how a cavity in a human system works. How that little middle cavity, that little tiny nose canal that we have in the middle of our skull, how that can guide us to give us the rest of our head really, really quickly 
by just breaking it down into a triangle. And having that, you have your teeth line, you have your eye line, you have your nose space, you have your cheekbones into your chin, you have your ear space, and the side of your face comes from here to however high you want it. So the actual concept of drawing from a circle kind of seems silly to me. So I have a bunch of different ways to do that. But that is what I would probably do. So I would have the lesson, the explanation, examples, a little video QR code for the lesson that I want to teach. And then, and then, and only then, I wouldn't want to do this in the actual book because it would make it too thick. And I want it to be more lessons, but then I'm going to give you guys ex uh, homework for each one. So each one will have homework to do on your own sketchbook. So it'll tell you what to do as examples of how you can improve on that pause it, and then what little tips and tricks you need to know, like inking, uh, perspective, and all those little key things will be as key notes so that you know what that element needs to be able to get better. For example, if you were drawing arms, right? If the lesson was on arms, well, the whole lesson would essentially be how to draw a beanbag. Because if you learn how to bend a beanbag, everything else is a beanbag. Everything in the hand can easily be a beanbag. The arm is a beanbag. The connection part with the wrist is a beanbag. Right? Everything is a beanbag. And from a beanbag, I can probably explain how to draw 90% of the body parts. So from there, that's a beanbag connected to a longer beanbag. Right into your body. So that's a bean bag into a bean bag into more bean bags. Is it okay to tag you? Yeah, tag me on Instagram. I love seeing your guys' work. I love it. I absolutely love it. I, I encourage you guys heavily to sh share with me to tell me what you guys think, what you guys want. I am taking a call in for a lie, for feedback. So what I'm asking right now is because I'm putting together my book. So right now I need you guys to let me know in comments through uh, through comments if you guys have ever learned anything good from me or if you guys have ever benefited from what I've done because that would be incredibly beneficial, not just to know from your, my point of view, but I can put that in the book. So I need reviews to make sure that whenever I do publish it, it gets seen with a positive light. So if you do, and I don't want just empty reviews, if you guys did get helped, if you guys did help uh, yourselves with some of my knowledge, uh, that is what I would like for you guys to take a chance and a second to maybe leave some kind words that will help me be able to maybe succeed in my book sales. That's all I would ask. And if you guys could do that for me, that'd be so incredibly beneficial. The beanbags have been the most useful for me. Yeah, the beanbags are good. Fingers are beanbag one and two beanbag two. <laughs> so you just combine two beanbags and you have fingers. Eventually, hand positions are going to be really easy, too. Once you understand the power of your knuckles, the knuckles are the most important part of your hand. Not your fingers, not your palm, not your whatever. It's your knuckles. Um, the reason why, your knuckles are the top and the bottom of your hand. Right, The top has the little pointy parts. The bottom has the little squishy parts, but the top and the bottom of your knuckle is the same width as your knuckle. So 
it tapers up a little bit into your wrist, but not very much. From here, from the wrist up, from pay attention to this, please. Please pay attention to this because it's this is like what made sense to me and it's going to help you guys so much. From the wrist connection up, whatever the wrist connection is, up where I draw my hand. Wait, where did I draw the hand? I am not that drunk or in that high. Where is the hand? <laughs> oh, it's right here. <laughs> I guess I'm just a little distracted. Uh, the thumb will come from the connecting point with the wrist. Up. From the wrist up. I know it sounds silly to think like that, but from the wrist up, you can draw a beanbag. Wherever you draw your wrist, connecting, boom. Your thumb can go in any part of this. Let's draw it here. Cool. So now we have a different hand position. Okay. So that is that is the one, one thing that's very important. From the wrist connection, wherever the wrist and the hand connect, that little connecting point, that is the line where the circle for your thumb is going to start. Okay? And that's going to give you the ability to draw a lot cooler shit. Anyways, we have that. Then the other step is drawing our knuckle. Our knuckle is inside of our palm. Inside of our palm. Not outside. Inside. Inside our palm, the wrist connecting, circle up, thumb, thumb, fingers, pew, pew, pew. Okay? So now let's play around with that. We have a knuckle. And we have, how many knuckles do we have? We have four knuckles. So this is our middle knuckle. So to our thumb side, we have one more. And to our pinky side, we have two more. Again, draw out our fingers, and we have ourselves another cool hand position. Now, let's push the envelope. Let's make it even easier, even easier. So, beanbag. Okay. Let's find the midline to this beanbag. Let's draw a midline. We already know that this is a connecting point with a wrist, and this is our midline, so we can draw a knuckle to identify our middle knuckle. This is the top and the bottom of my hand now. So therefore, I have the width of my hand already. That circle gives me the width of my hand. So now I need one more to my thumb side. That is a circle coming from the connecting point. Two more to fill in my hand. And then I draw bean bags for all my fingers. And now I have myself a wrist and my hand. I can do the same thing going this way. Let's draw another connecting point down. Let's make it go this way this time. Midline. Now let's draw the bottom of the hand. So let's choose one side to be our thumb side. We'll choose this side because we can see it more. From our wrist connection up, a circle is going to be the width of my thumb. I'm going to dictate my middle knuckle, and then I'm going to choose one to my thumb side, two to my pinky side. Going to draw my fingers, tapering like cylinders, like bean bags, however you feel like drawing your fingers. Okay, and then the bo the the palm right here is divided into two parts: your thumb muscle that comes from your thumb hole. And then your pinky one. Your pinky one comes from your pinky one, from your pinky knuckle. And then this is the little triangle that happens in between your squishy lines of your thumbs, of your knuckles. So now you have the ability to draw your hands from both directions just because you decided to follow a couple guidelines. Now let's choose a random shape. Let's do the same thing. Let's choose one part to add to our thumb or to for our wrist. The wrist is going to be the same width as our palm. It's going to be roughly the same width. The only difference is that when you have your thumb, you have extra width. Sometimes a little bit. Sometimes a little bit of the pinky 
extends a little bit more. Maybe a tiny bit. But not that much to be able to say like, oh, this. That's dumb. That's a style. That's a style choice. This is not how your body works. Okay? You don't have... It's like the people that draw like that weird thing on, on faces without having to do it. You do it because of styles that you've seen that have had that. So therefore, now you think that that is what happens with everybody. And that's not what happens with everybody. The hands are more likely, more like this, evenly tapered with your wrist. And then if you need an extra level of detail, you can slightly taper it and you get like a slenderer look. But I digress. And let's go on to the actual example. You can draw any hand, any shape, any shape. And as long as you start placing these elements in there, you're going to be able to draw a cool hand. Let's identify the knuckle, or, th or not the knuckle, but the base of the thumb first by finding our intersection. And then within this whole line, it could be on any part of this line. I'm going to draw a circle going up, and now that becomes the base of my thumb. As long as I connect it going to it and back into it, I have that. Now I need to find four knuckles. Now, another way that you can do it is by doing it like this. Identifying one side as your index finger, the other side of your hand as your pinky finger, drawing them out, and then just filling in the rest that are necessary. And that's another way that you can approach it. But you can turn any shape into a hand. Any shape. Because hands are flexible. They're like octopuses. Okay? A hand has so much mobility. So much mobility. That it's so hard to put it into a single box. It's so hard to just say like, oh, well, yeah, that's how you draw hands. Well... No, a box will never give you all the ability of what a hand can do. Hands can do ridiculous things in ridiculous ways. Because hands are awesome. So learning how to draw them properly is going to be very important. Index, pinky. Wrist connection, thumb. Fill in the rest with a big finger and divide it into two if you want to do cartoony stuff like princesses and stuff like that. And then you have thumb, pinky. And you already have your knuckles. So you have your hand. Ta -da! Now let's get to 40. Now let's get to 50K. Let's get to 50K while I take a sip of coffee. And I start highlighting these things because I need to, like, add some spice to this. We're going to highlight the knuckles. Only, though. We're only going to highlight the knuckles because that's the important part. The knuckles and the connecting. And I guess the wrist size is actually important, too. So let's highlight that. So what do you guys think so far? Are you guys learning anything? I have a feeling you guys might be because uh, I don't really see these things te taught like this ever. Like I had to invent ways to draw myself and sometimes um, they make sense to other people. Sometimes they don't. But that's the nature of teaching. Yeah. Sweet. Awesome. Awesome sauce. Cool. It's good to know. Good to know. Especially the wrist joint, funny enough. Yeah, but little tiny things, man. Like, it's always little tiny things. Like, it's like that one thing that you, like, question, right? That you're, like, curious. Like, oh, does that work? Yeah, it kind of works, but why does it work? Why does it work? And then, like, you find out why that is. And you're like, ah, oh, that is why it didn't work. Oh, my gosh. That is why. So that's what I provide a lot of the times. 
I seem to be a factory for those type of moments. The eclipse moments. Yeah, whenever uh, some one of my videos goes viral, like it, it happens often, like where they get like maybe a million views, they get like maybe like seven hundred thousand views, three hundred thousand views, stuff like that. It's really cool because you start seeing all the people that aren't artists comment. So they start seeing like they start seeing it, right? Because so many people are seeing it that like the non-artists start seeing it and then you start seeing all the comments going like, What did I just listen to? And then you start seeing all the other comments going like, thank you so much. You saved my life. And I'm like, ah. and some people get mad. Some people get really mad. Go look at them. Like the comments are hilarious. The comments are absolutely hilarious. Some people start like saying like, don't listen to him. Go, le go learn from Loomis. And I'm like, yeah, you should learn. Go le no, no. I mean, just him, not you. I'm like, whoa, buddy. All right. Cool. Thank you, I guess, for the hate. <laughs> As Riley from the Boondock said, if you ain't got no haters, you ain't doing something right. Or something like that. Yeah. Ooh, homework. I'm going to give you guys homework. <laughs> All right, let's get to the homework so that we can actually uh, get you guys drawn. All right, so homework for this week. Seeing as today we talked a little bit about the body, proportions, and we talked a little bit about the hands. So I'm going to give you guys an option between two assignments, or you guys can do both of them together. Since we talked about two very drastic topics, the first topic I'm going to have you guys do is I'm going to have you guys do these little simple guys. right? If you guys want to practice your posing, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to be able to master posing from step one. And step one isn't necessarily drawing stick figures because stick figures don't really give you any semblance of like depth, right? They don't really give you much dynamic movement either. So drawing a stick figure doesn't really do much for you. But the other simple way to draw a body is by drawing a little circle, drawing circles one and two to give you a crisscross like this. And then from there, using these quadrants, to be able to draw your limbs from there. You're going to end up getting like a little chibi character. Ta-da! These little characters are very fun to manipulate because you get to learn how your body moves. Being able to tell a story with characters at this level is a very good representation of you being able to actually tell a story with movement as opposed to always doing it through the de detail. Because a lot of the times, we focus on drawing detail to tell any sort of semblance of a storyline as opposed to actually doing what you can to be able to tell a story through movement. And this is a very basic exercise that you can use to be able to get used to drawing not just the body in different positions, but also being able to tell a quick story by doing so. Okay? So being able to do it at this level is really, really, really important. You want to draw Sonic like this? Cool. Draw a little ball. Draw your little thingies, and then draw your little feet. You're going to have to draw different shoes, of course. But you can totally draw Sonic. So yes, you can draw Sonic the Hedgehog like that. That's perfectly fine. And that looks like an actual hedgehog, though. <laughs> so your exercise, your homework, homework one, will be to take a circle, 
plus two inside circles to create a voluminous sphere that will be this. You got to learn to draw through your shape to get better. So learning how to do that is another part of the exercise. Once you find this, you're going to map out four quadrants and you're going to draw four little circles that go around it. If you want to draw a head and you want to practice the head, draw a little circle in between the top two. If you want to get even more accurate, leave a little space in between the bottom two. So you end up with a shape like this. Two circles on the sides that are angled and two circles on the side that are angled with one in the middle. In the bottom, it's your groin. and the top, it's going to be your head. And when you start making these longer and you keep those same measurements, just make things a little bit longer, you start seeing how that benefits you in the learning of body parts. Because eventually you're going to be able to add different sections. Because you're going to know anatomy. But you're going to have all the spacing needed. Because that turns into that. And then you already have your connecting points. So your posing is going to come a lot easier. Yo. Pa -pa. Pa -pa. Pa -pa. Pa -pa. <laughs> so this turns into this, turns into that. You add a circle at the top and the bottom in between, and you end up with this. This turns into these. And when you make them longer and you add other sections, you end up with this. So that is homework number one. Homework number one is this. Now, homework number two is going to be hands. So do at least, at least, at least one or two pages of these exercises. But... But I'm going to show you guys how I want those pages filled up. All right? I want you guys to take this into like a real consideration. I want you guys to draw a couple lines. Maybe like three or four lines. Minimum. Minimum. And I want you to draw a bunch of little poses going across. Essentially, you're doing like a lineup of movement. So you're going to tell a story by going... Do, 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 do. And then maybe the next one's jumping. And then the next one's going to be landing. And then this one's splatted. That's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to not just play around with this, but also try to keep it consistent so that it doesn't just become a big mess of little tiny balls. I want you guys to start telling a story. This is just the very basics of it. Okay? This is the very basics premise of it. I normally teach this by a concept called Mr. Globy. Mr. Globy is the act of giving this little shape a hat and a face and then treating that like a character. Because once you actually put that forth, you can practice a bunch of different things too. Ta -da. So you can do it with like little things coming out or you can practice your quadrants with the same guy. So Mr. Globy is the exercise, essentially. Homework number two are hands. Hands are going to be a little bit easier, okay? Hands, I want you guys to practice doing this. I want you guys to draw a, any shape you want, 
keep it within hand shapes, okay? Don't go like crazy and expect it to work. Don't go like, don't do like stuff like, and then expect that to work, even though that was probably still work because it just looks like a scrunched up hand. Okay, that would still work, but, but, but I digress. That's what happens when we draw all the time, all our hands. But I want you guys to begin by just drawing basic hand shapes, like circles, boxes, maybe tapered shapes like this. Just keep it consistently within the structures of what an, a hand could be. Don't go too crazy. From there, you're going to find your middle knuckle to your hand. Or, alternatively, you can find the two side knuckles of your index and your pinky or your middle knuckle. Whichever one you feel more comfortable finding. I find the middle knuckle comfortable because I find it in the middle of the wrist. But this one is also very easy to find because you just do it at the edges of your hand. So either way, however you find it, it's perfectly fine. From there, from the wrist connection, whatever wrist connection you're going to draw, up, you're going to draw the width of your actual thumb. If you want it to be nice and big, make that big. If you want it to be nice and dainty, draw it smaller. That size is going to correlate to that inside muscle for your hand that leads to about the middle part of your hand. So that just follows through, follows in, goes in. Okay? Whatever the width of that is, that is where your thumb is going to go. Your thumb can go like a beanbag in any direction. Okay? But it has to connect back to this point. So if you have your hand and you want it crossing, you can draw your finger crossing, but you have to connect it back to that circle. And that is how you develop the ability to draw through your shape or outside your shape. By learning that contact point. The knuckles become the contact point for your fingers. This little circle that you draw, because it's not really the knuckle. The knuckle for our thumb, well, I'm looking at it, it is in the base, but it's a little bit more difficult to like map out because of all the bendiness. But if you do it with a basic circle, it becomes a lot easier to control. Your fingers have a lot of range of movement. Your fingers can range in movement drastically. And they also bend, right? They also bend in a bunch of different ways. So you need to learn basic perspective to understand that sometimes, sometimes you're going to have situations where your fingers cross each other. And you need to learn how that overlaps, how that crosses, how that happens. Sometimes you're going to get bending. And bending is literally just a cylinder approach going into perspective. So you need to learn basic perspective to draw hands even decently. So your goal for at least this week is to, first of all, go watch my 100 can challenge video. So you can learn how to draw hands perfectly. And then do a bunch of hands. Do like two pages worth of hands. Like, and just like fill them like Rod Gunn would fill them. Like literally. Just, just fill it up as much as you can like I would. If, if you were me, how would I fill up the page? What would Rod do? <laughs> and I am not associated with any religious institutions. I am not Catholic. I'm not anything. So please don't consider that like a take or stab at that. I'm not trying to make myself into anything. <laughs> Just in case, I know it's coming. I, I know those things come. Like they, Yeah, so I, I just preemptively put that stop to that. So yeah. Anyways, we have our homework, we have our exercises, and I will upload the video to YouTube and have it up there in the next couple of days. I'm scheduling them so that's one video a day, and I have them all the way up to March 4th. So up until now, I have videos all the way to March 4th. So you guys can expect a new video at noon every single day until March 4th at least. And every single time I stream, I'm going to do my best to upload it and schedule it so that it comes on a couple days later. Uh, that way you guys have access to that knowledge and you guys can actually not be oversaturated with a lot of information. Because if I upload all the videos at once, you guys would maybe see maybe one or two. But then you guys would kind of just be like, oh, 
okay, we'll wait for uh, the next one. Let's do wait for the next one. And then you kind of lose track of things. So you end up not really following through with that lesson. And I would hate to not be able to uh, have someone see my lessons just because they're overly saturated with my content. So I am going to try to release them at least once a day, maybe once every couple of days if I start backtracking again into like my habits <laughs> or if I get too busy with work or whatever. But for now, I'm like five days ahead of schedule. I should be able to maintain this for a long time. And with that being said, thank you so much for being my drawing buddies. You guys are the absolute best reason for me to be alive. Honestly, like that's the reason that I'm uh, super happy every day. Uh, I live my life the way that I like to live my life because of you guys. I can because of my fans, because of the people that support me. So if you guys want to do support this cause, you guys have a couple ways. You guys can go join my YouTube channel. You guys can go buy my books. My books are the biggest source of income towards my life. So you guys can purchase those. That's a good thing. Uh, I do private consultations if you guys do feel like you guys want one-on-one. -on -one. And I do private mentoring, but that is very selective and I do have rigorous tests in order to be able to bring that up. So if you guys do feel like you're going to try that, let me know. There is a vigorous uh, uh, skills assessment test that needs to be completed to be able to even be considered. So uh, very few people have ever, ever actually gotten past the initial stage but those that have have successfully grown into amazing artists what's your prerequisite you have to ask you got to go message me uh it's like a uh it's like a 10 like 10 doodle like uh, assessment test so you do 10 doodles within five minutes of time each and then it gives me a nice assessment of what you are like knowledgeable of when it comes down to anatomy, when it comes down to perspective, when it comes down to detail, style, shading, contrast, and a very quick guide into your mental library in the form of do you know how to draw vehicles, cars, um, buildings, a uh, human skeleton, a human animal, well, not a humanized animal, but uh, like a human, an animal, a vehicle, a house, a human body, a human skeleton, a human skull, a human face, and three expressions to see if you can actually do it. So if you do that and you send them to me, take five minutes max and record yourself while you do it. You got to record yourself so that I can see how you approached it. And on top of that, it's not just drawing that, it's also explaining what your thought process is while you're doing this. So do a mini Rodgon video. Do a mini Rodgon video that explains that you know what you're talking about, about each one of those topics, and then send it to me. And then I will be like, okay, well, you don't know this, so let's teach you on this. You don't know this, so let's make you better at this. And then that is how I gauge your skill so that I can tell you what you can improve. But I can't do it outside of just having you do drawings in front of me because that's just really hard as a teacher to be able to gauge that just from your finished work. I don't know how long you, like how many mistakes you made. I don't know if you really know the knowledge. I know that you can draw, but most people can draw if they just take enough time, enough copying, enough references. So doing it in a small amount of time in front of your teacher tends to put you on the spot and it makes you really, 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 really show if you know what you're talking about or you're just doodling nonstop until you get to a result that's acceptable, which is a very big difference. But that'll be a lesson for another time. Come with me and you'll see how to draw from your imagination. <laughs> I am so going to coin that I want, I want a theme song like that <laughs> Anyone that does music Please let me know If you guys would be willing To make me a beat like that I kind of want that type of feel <laughs> 
All right, you guys have a lovely day. I might come in here and uh, do another page later tonight. Mostly because I'm feeling really good, man. And, and, and these are coming out beautiful. Like, these are absolutely lovely. Like, this, this is going to be a pretty book. This is going to be a really pretty book. And I have a feeling a lot of good things are going to come from this one. Yeah, this one's been fantastic. So far, so good. We already have like ten page, uh, like almost ten pages, <laughs> and we just started it like a couple days ago. Mustache. Hey, sit down. Sit down. You just wake up and you start barking. Yeah, just wake up and start like making everybody's problem, huh? Jesus Christ. Anyways, yeah, it's been fun. It's been really fun. And it started off strong. It gives me like a really big like um, feel of all the old sketchbooks I used to do. I used to do a lot of fun collages. I used to do a lot of fun like things in general. And then I went into study mode. And then I stopped doing all that stuff. So I think I'm going to start going back into my own habits of the things that I love to do. And that includes drawing things like this. Just fun, energetic drawings and focusing on the things that I love to do. While at the same time teaching you guys some valuable stuff, right? Anyways, you guys have a lovely day. Take care. See you guys tomorrow or later today for another lesson. Uh, anyways, you guys have a lovely day. Take care. See you guys tomorrow or later today for another lesson. Uh and I'm going to do like a dual like drawing session with him. Tomorrow, tomorrow we have a lovely person from Spain joining us. Uh they're going to be the so all are my uh, Spanish speaking people. Uh, you guys will have a stream in Spanish tomorrow with a guest artist. So that'll be really fun. And she's into animation and stuff like that, too. So it'll be like kind of like with Agnes. We brought Agnes Garbowska here and we she like was an awesome, an awesome addition to the stream. So we're going to have that. And I'm going to test it out with Wes as well later on today if he has time. And yeah, so that'll be fun. We start we're starting to build a network. Our family is growing. Our family of artists is growing. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to get Sarkaiju here too. Uh, with him, it's more like uh, he just has to want to. I I've, I've given him a lot of options, man. <laughs> I just, I want him to come on here. He's just, a, he's a little shy. He hasn't done it uh, before. So it's, it, it's hard to actually communicate these things. Like, I don't think people understand how hard it is to come on here and talk for hours. It really is hard. It's not easy. This is not easy at all. This is like really traumatizing for a lot of people because they're afraid they're going to say the wrong thing or that they don't know what they're doing or they're going to like mess up. I mess up all the time, all the time, all the time, but I still do it. And that's the difference. All right. Take care, everybody. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.